This could, could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It seems to me that you humans get crazier every day. But what do I know? I'm just a rubber chicken who, well, we we do. We seem to redefine insanity every single day, rubber chicken. You're right on that. And we'll talk about it another time because we got to get on with Rantcast 74 entitled. I got no war jokes. None. Zip. No war jokes. None today. None are going to happen. People always say, uh, what are the things you can't make a joke about? Well, I, I find it really hard uh, to make war jokes. Um, I, 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 unless you're in the middle of it and you're in a, a trench somewhere and you can, then you've got to come up with something to make, keep yourself, you know, kind of laughing so you can make it to the next day. Then I might come up with one, but sitting here watching it on a weekly basis and on a daily basis, on every 10 minute basis. No, um, no, I don't have I don't have any. What's happening in the Ukraine is beyond my comprehension. Um, I, the only people that seem to be really happy about this um, uh, war is, uh, I think, uh, the news media, which is finally they've got a, 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 like a live stream that, you know, it's just horrible every day. And they can go on with their, this is awful here. This is some more awful. Here's some more awful. I, it, it, it's just gotten to the point of uh, like, you turn on the TV, it's kind of like, uh, well, uh, you know, on, on a larger global perspective, how are we going to die today? Huh? Is it going to be COVID, which has kind of disappeared for a moment? Uh, or is it going to be that the uh, schmuck is going to, you know, hit a nuclear button because we can't figure out what to do? And where's the tipping point? Huh? Where's the tipping point? How many times the world got to watch? They watched in Syria. They watched in, I think there's a whole list. And they just stand there and watch. Everybody watches. This is co completely and utterly crazy. It's madness on a level that's unimaginable. They just sit and watch. And we watch people, 2.1 million, 2.4 million, 3 million probably by next week, refugees wandering out, forced out of where they live for, for reasons that, you know. And then, and then we have to have a, an argument at this point in time about, well, you know, about, uh, you know, white and black in terms of refugees. Yeah, that it's, in, it's important. That's an important discussion. But what's really more important is how the fuck do you deal with this? And you don't, you don't send the MiGs? I'm sorry. I don't get it. I really don't get it. What the hell difference does it make if you're going to send javelins or jaguars or whatever the fuck else weaponry you're sending? You know, g give them the me. I don't get it. I don't get any of it. I'm not a war strategist. I don't know why you. I don't know why you ask me these questions. So I'm going to move on. This is insanity. I, I don't get. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. We're here in Boston. That I get. Uh, if you see the background, it's a gray, shitty, gray, gray, shitty, gray, which it's Boston in March. Just a delightful time to come up here. Uh, I have spent time in Boston from January, February, March, and April, and I saw the sun twice. That's a fact. That's a true story. Okay. Now that's, is that as bad as what is going on there? No, but that's what's happening here. Um, and I'm back in Boston for that. We had a, a, a fun show last night. You'll get to hear some of the, the rants from, from that group of bitter folks uh, coming up uh, later on in, in the, uh, in the rant cast. But for, for now, it's really, um, it's really just what it always is when I come to Boston, just a, a bleak, horrifying, ugly day that in, uh, you, you know, where you kind of just stare out and go, uh, is it going to end? It'll end, and then it'll just be gray, and then it might snow or sleet, uh, depending. And then it'll be tomorrow, and there'll be the sun will come out for a moment, and then it'll just be just frigid cold. They, they're, they're insane here when it comes to weather. I, I don't know how they put up with this shit. They ought to build a dome over the city. It's a part of my project, larger project. I'm working on domes for America where we live and we adjust the temperatures when needed. Uh, I haven't figured out how we do this yet, but um, I'm hoping it'll save in terms of energy, something that seems to be, need to be done. But I'll move on. The uh, big news for me this week, because I can't really talk about uh, the Ukraine, which is really the news, uh, 
is that uh, well, there's the big news is uh, there's uh, we're we're wandering around the country again, and there just doesn't seem to be anything in place in terms of uh, mask mandates. We have no idea. You, sh- you show up at one theater, it's one thing; in another theater, it's another thing. Both sides doesn't matter. Both sides are yelling about it, so uh, that's that's been a lot of fun. They did. There's, there's been no agreement about how to do that. And every day, um, I'm, I'm caught between. Oh, I should be wearing a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. Somebody came up last night, and wanted to take a picture, and said that they were triple vaxxed in a uh, uh, an emergency room doctor. And so I just believed them. And but I should have said, let me see your vaccination thing. But we were outside. And he had a real camera, so why wouldn't he be triple vaxxed? That's the, the kind of logic I live with now. Uh, but and then I wake up, and then I wake up the next day, going, "Oh my God, uh, look at what I've done! It's incredible! It, it just—it's this endless, this endless cycle, which will eventually end, and it'll end because, uh, and it would end faster for me if they did, if they're not trying to dis- destroy sports." And that's really what's happening in terms of my world. Uh, it's the destruction of sports, right? Uh, so I go from the Washington team not to be named. I sh- it was the Washington football team. And they go to the Washington commanders. I've already discussed that. And then this week, uh, I get a call from my friend Kathleen Madigan taunting me, taunting me. It, not so much even on a, on a taunting level, just calling me to tell me because she knew I had not heard that uh, Carson Wentz had been chosen as the, you know, basically they were trading for Carson Wentz, okay, to be the quarterback. And I must say, uh, I, who was lives in a kind of a depression trough now, went into a deeper one, just started digging and digging and digging. I had a little bit of hope um, as we held out for maybe, even if we didn't pick up a great quarterback or something, that, that they were looking around. For, for someone that, you know, maybe not this year, but a draft choice, maybe someone in the future. But Carson Wentz, please, seriously, this is where we're at. Carson Wentz, who kind of is the, looks like to me, the Scooby-Doo of quarterbacks. That's who he looks like. And it just, I got to watch this now and I got to root for it. Hey, I'm got to root for him. And I, and it's just more than I can bear. My friend Ray Larson even said, we traded two third round draft picks. I don't even know what, there was more that was involved. And he said that for us to take Carson Wentz, the Washington should have taken Carson Wentz and gotten two third round draft picks. That'll show you just how deeply this kind of, it, it makes no sense. Would I have waited around for Jimmy Garoppolo? Yes. Okay. Would I feel any better? A little, a little better. OK, because uh, and the other thing is, is he comes from the the uh, the very tainted Indianapolis cult tainted because they're not cults. They are the Indianapolis, whatever the fuck they are. They were stolen from me when I was a child. And now and now in return, the gift is Carson Wentz. What fucking bullshit. God. And then. It, and then if things weren't bad enough, the, the real hope that I was holding out for, uh, because all of my friends have teams they root for that are really good, um, San Francisco, uh, the Yankees, uh, Boston, um, then uh, St. Louis, and I have the Orioles. And my hope was that they, would, uh, they wouldn't have a season this year. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Big lockout. Big lockout so that Baltimore would have really one of the great seasons we've had over the past 10 years. It'd be a winning season. Why? Because we didn't play. <laughs> and maybe then they could scurry about and give another year to kind of develop some players, all right? Uh, however they're doing it. They, it's just it's ludicrous. And they didn't work out anything with, as far as I could tell in, in my initial readings of, the, uh, uh, of what was on the screen, I didn't sit down and read the... Read the read what what, what was uh, what was decided between the players and the owners, but for crying out loud, I didn't look at it at all. Um, but I I do know that they didn't come up with anything in terms of teams like the Orioles. The Orioles should be punished for the shit they're doing. Punished by by. Uh, but there's no punishment for that. It's just oh yeah oh you're developing. Oh, go ahead, it'll be fun to watch. It's not fun to watch. Okay. We got a really great stadium. We have one of the great stadiums in the United States. All right, and we and, and I've and 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 I'll say it again. 
They come down from New York City. It's cheaper to watch a family of four to come down to watch a game in Baltimore and spend the night there and uh, have a, and go to the game than it is to go to Yankee Stadium, okay? And what do we have? I got a team that it doesn't work. So they've wiped out. Baseball is wiped out for me. It would have been great if there was a strike. Nope, I don't get that. I got Carson Wentz. Uh, I got uh, the Wizards. They don't even show on television. You can get them. Uh, my microwave oven at home picks up occasionally some some uh, some some uh, stuff of the, from the game, some radio commentary. You can hear it just barely in the background. Fucking nothing. Okay, you treat it as if they don't even exist. So throw them under the bus. The only thing that's left is March Madness. And how? I, and I say that that's all I have left. Okay, because I really don't. Uh, I, I root for for North Carolina, yes, but I'm not like you know psychotic about it. I mostly love watching basketball. It's the greatest fucking you know few weeks of my life. And let's see how they fuck that up, okay? Because you know they're out there doing it. They're already conspiring. They're already c- creating 16 new songs that they'll play between each play. You know, where somebody will get a basket and then they'll play some sort of stirring fucking piece of music showing him make the basket and some jackass will comment on it. Another one of those ones. And and you know what? Spend less money on hair gel, you fuckers. Okay? Do that. Okay? Work on elocute. You know what? Work on shutting the fuck up and letting us watch the game. Okay? You don't need this shit anymore. All I'm asking for is March Madness. And by the end of that, that'll be gone too. So I have nothing. I'm going to have to fucking try to find maybe lacrosse. I may end up being like, a, it'll be curling. That'll be my life. What's Lewis doing? He's always watching curling. He set up a team in Baltimore. He put all of his money into it. Yeah, so he'd have one sport left to distract himself with. I'm going to leave you with this. We had a great week. And just to tell you, it was, it's been great. It's been great being back on the road. Um... And, uh, and and being out here again. And we're still not experiencing life as we know it. So this whole idea that we're back to normal is bullshit on a stick, okay? I mean, it really is. Well, things are just like, no, they're not, okay? You don't really have, I used to have experiences. <laughs> you know, you'd go out in the city and then you'd kind of, things would happen around you and there's still nothing. Okay, mostly it's people trying to avoid whatever it is that, you know, and maybe maybe have a, a lunch somewhere. Okay, but there's nothing one wouldn't call it experiences. Well, I, I should define that better for you. But you know what? I was I'm broken by the sports thing. Okay. I'm going to leave you with this because I did not see this. Many of you probably did. Um, and this is this is when you call off something. The, the Finnish skier Remy Lindholm. Suffered a frozen penis during the men's Olympic cross country event. Held in howling icy winds, Lindholm, who needed to apply a heat pack after the race, said the pain was unbearable. I, okay, I am old now and lived a long life and never, never, never have I in, in, seen in a sentence uh, the words uh, frozen penis. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, some sort of a, uh, you know, uh, some sort of an odd, uh, you know, kind of a, something they might sell at, uh, you know, a, uh, like a Ben and Jerry's were having, uh, it's in their, their freezer department where, you know, frozen penises on sale. <laughs> frozen penis, guy gets a frozen penis in an Olympic event. You shut it down. Say, that's it. That's why I don't watch the Olympics. And I'm glad I missed it. Fucking have to watch some guy get his penis frozen. Whew. So that's it from here. Um, we're going to be uh, rolling uh, next week into Jamestown, New York, the home of the National Comedy Center, where we'll be doing a uh, live um, rant cast. A live rant is due from, uh, from, uh, the, from the National Comedy Center. Uh, the money from that will go to the uh, comedy center. Uh, the uh, and um, we're uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hopefully going to uh, if we can work it out, I'll have some special guests. And if not, it'll just be me, ranting and raving, and it'll all be about Carson Wentz. 
So you're going to want to tune that in. I'm sure, I'm sure that's something that concerns all of you. Um, it's a pleasure spending time with you as always. We'll see you again. Uh, and we're, you know, because it wasn't shitty enough here. I said, let's go further north. Let's get an hour away from Buffalo and let's, let's watch the winds howl off the lake up there. That'll be nice. See you then. Today's show is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. By this point, you've probably heard about the rising trend in THC gummies. And you might have been curious as to what benefits you could get from them. Microdose gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. People have taken advantage of all kinds of the therapeutics that they offer, such as helping to reduce anxiety, recovering from a workout, alleviating joint pain, or just wanting to get a good night's sleep. They taste and feel amazing. You can use them to get into the zone for whatever you might need to do, whether it's doing something creative or winding down from a long day. They are 10 out of 10. Microdose gummies are available nationwide, and you can learn more about them and microdosing THC by visiting microdosegummies.com and use code LEWIS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Once again, that's microdosegummies.com and use the code LEWIS. Here we are coming to you live from the Concord Theater at the Chubb Theater. The Capital Center for the Performing Arts. Did I get that right? Yeah. It's a, I, I don't know what you said. <laughs> Just because we've started this part, it, it, the same rules apply. <laughs> we have a lot to get to. Concord, if you've not been there, is an absolutely beautiful town um, in, uh, in, in New Hampshire. And, uh, and you're going to want to come. And you can tell by the applause. They don't. He's, I'm serious. Uh, there has been, a, a, I think, from what I can tell tonight, just from this sample, uh, they have not gotten over this pandemic. Uh, They've almost traumatized. They don't even know how nice it is where they live. You just heard, I said it's a beautiful place and four people applauded the place. No, 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 it doesn't count now. It's really, it's, it's, it's really nice. And, and probably uh, the way things are, they, 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 you might want to come up here if you like it, knock on a door and, and try to buy a house. They seem to want to leave. No, it's, it really is. And, and, and wait, wait until like late April. Okay? Unless, unless you know, you're a snow bunny. <laughs> Fuck you. We got a lot of stuff come in, and so I'd like to get to it. And um, this is from Deborah O. She's here tonight. Why, if we are vaccinated, are you making us, are you making us wear fucking masks? Deborah? Uh, let me just say, I don't have that kind of power. <laughs> I didn't make you wear the mask. There was not a thing out front that said, welcome to the Chubb Theater. Lewis says, put on a fucking mask, okay? <laughs> I don't make that decision. Your town made that decision, which may be the reason you want to leave. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's why you're upset, but I, it, I am not in charge. I know at times, because I have the microphone, it seems like I'm the president. I'm not. Um, I love this because I, it's so well written and incomprehensible at the same time. But it says more about government than, than most things do. Gary McAllister, government spending is bizarre. Uh, I'm a state employee. My job is to process paperwork to get federal funding for state programs. So taxpayers are paying me with taxes to get their taxes that they pay to the federal government to be used in this state. The state pays fees to different state agencies. So taxpayers pay workers to send a fee, which is tax money, to get a service from a worker who's paid by taxes 
to do the job anyway. <laughs> Unfucking believable. I, I really, I, seriously, I've read that about nine times, Gary. <laughs> this is from TS. Uh, hey, Lewis, I'm at your show! Exclamation point. Please inform parents to stop endangering their children at the fucking grocery store. Stop allowing your children to run amok. Don't fucking risk your child's lives by allowing them to ride at the front of your cart unless you want them to run into other people. Grocery stores are not a fucking jungle gyms. I'm gonna, Dennis, this Dennis V, I'm not gonna read your whole name in case you, uh, unless you, in case your aunt is here. My, si my mother's sister, my aunt, um, thank you. <laughs> Slept with the town priest. You would think that was bad, but she moved and then did it again. That's why I do this. <laughs> that's, that's just great. <laughs> Jim Lawson, gas prices in New Hampshire are ridiculous. Can you spot me $10 for the ride home? <laughs> my, my credit's good. Trump's accounting firm says my double wide is worth $2 million. <laughs> Gas prices are ridiculous everywhere. Um, uh, I'm, I'm in a tour bus. So I get, <laughs> whenever you're sitting around, whenever you're at that pump, uh, just think of this. My, uh, my tour bus gets uh, uh, three miles to the gallon. <laughs> so actually, in order to perform this show tonight, I've lost $16,000. <laughs> but I said, no. I must get to Concord. It's unbelievable. It just, it, but I'm interested to see how this follows out because everybody's like, we support, uh, we, we're going to support the Ukrainians and go ahead and s stop selling gas, you know, buying gas from Russia. And, uh, and then there's all sorts of things that are coming out about the Keystone Pipeline, there's all sorts of stuff that's coming out that's kind of nonsense, <laughs> and there's this whole rigmarole, but it's like uh, about, you know, about the, about the price of gas. But everybody agrees, 70% apparently. Fucking, yeah, we're gonna, not gonna, but we, we, what do you, people are gonna get, don't, I, 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 I can't wait to see the, how long that lasts. I, I think we're good for mm, another 12 minutes. <laughs> I do, I just don't think we've got it in us. It, it, it really pisses us off. I mean, it's pricey. You wanna support, you watch those things every night and you go, that's what we gotta do. That's, if that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. But I'll tell you yesterday, driving up in that shit storm, okay? You would think that they were handing free shit out at the New Hampshire border. I'm fucking serious. People were driving like there was no fucking tomorrow. So I don't wanna hear it. Oh God, I can't, where do they, where are they all fucking going? It was three in the afternoon, God damn it. Oh yeah, going to work at three, fuck you. Bullshit, bullshit, going to work. Fucking unbelievable. Why the, Steve Bryan, why the fuck is recreational weed legal in every other state around New Hampshire? But not New Hampshire. Yeah, I don't, you know. Hello? You're right here at the, right here at the state capitol. Hello? How tough is it? Huh? Hard to get it done? Who's stopping you? Huh? Who's stopping you? The governor, Sununu? He was the son of the other Sununu. Yeah, how many Sununus you want to elect, you idiots?
<laughs> at least write him a letter and say, do you think if I smoke this stuff that then I'll vote against you? What, I mean, it's like, <laughs> wow. Well, at least you can get over a state line. <laughs> this is from Lisa de Bartolomo. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I fucked that up. Lisa de Bartolomo. Uh, Live free or die, that's the freaking motto for New Hampshire. But everyone thinks is, it's, the, it's a fucking law. I don't need no seatbelt. Live free or die. Helmet? Hell no, I can do 80 on the interstate on my motorcycle. You can't make me wear a helmet. Live free or die. Mask, vaccine, fucking bullshit you. Fuck you, fuck you. Live free or die. <laughs> Nothing pisses me off more than some stupid New Hampshire jerk trying to make a motto into a law. This is the live free or die state. I ain't gonna follow that. <laughs> I love the applause. It's so fucking good in this room. <laughs> it is. Why are you not gonna get fucking legal pot? You go, well, I'm... <laughs> I've never understood the live free or die or what the fuck that means. And now, now you're fighting over what free means, so good luck with that. <laughs> huh? Good luck! <laughs> Son of a bitch, I forgot that in my act. That there's, uh, was it, the, in the end, it's, it's this big thing about, you know, health and freedom, and they're, they're, apparently they, they, they intersect. It's, okay, health and freedom have nothing to do with each other. Nothing. And I know this. And I know this because they're spelt differently. <laughs> this is from Tim Theberg. I live in a small town in New Hampshire. I'm the local school board chairperson. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> the volume of emails I've received over the last two years about the pandemic and, uh, and about freedom in relation to masks and having been called a tyrant is exhausting. Oh, and apparently Wi-Fi and 5G are gonna kill the kids. Please make it end. <laughs> I, I can't, Tim. I can't. And I've got people who come to see my shows who, who think I can. <laughs> Have you ever thought of going on the Calm Meditation app? <laughs> I will end with this. And... Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a good one to end on. This is from Greg Bardsley. The war on bathrooms. Not what you think. That's why I'm reading it. Let me thank you all before we finish for coming out this evening. We were... It was great. It was really great to be back here, and it's been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to coming back and seeing you again. God fucking damn it, Lewis. I've got a rant I've been holding in for months like a hot, steamy turd. <laughs> so you gotta love my audience. One of the greatest things about being an American is being able to piss or shit in any garbage fast food restaurant at any time with no questions asked. <laughs> sure, we as Americans may not have health care, retirement, any sort of social safety nets, anything really to keep us from feeling like we're valued at all in our society. But at least, up until now, we could piss or shit in whatever fucking Dunkin' Donuts or goddamn combination KFC Taco Bell we needed to. But no, even that's too much to ask for. It's one more thing that COVID took away. At the height of the pandemic, I get it, we were all in perpetual fear and businesses had good reason to shut down their bathrooms. But now it's become the law of the land. Huh? Fast food bathrooms are always closed now, even if you're a goddamn customer. With everything we've lost to COVID, I hope we can recognize that many of the liberties we had before 
We're never coming back. And one of those liberties <laughs> is being able to piss or shit whenever and wherever we need to. Without that, we might as well just go back to being fucking monkeys. <laughs> Every so often, this, the stars align when I, when I do a show, and especially when, it, when I do the rant is due because, you know, all this stuff about liberties and all the freedom and all of this, and then he, he just nails it. <laughs> just, just with the simplest, you're taking away our freedom to piss and shit. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Concord, Lewis. Hope you're able to piss and shit before you leave. This week's Rantcast is brought to you by Factor. The weather is getting better, and I, like most people, am busy. The last thing I want to do is spend time in the kitchen. Luckily, I don't have to meal plan, and I can still eat well because of Factor. Factor makes it easy to eat healthy all day, every day, with fresh, never frozen, prepared meals that are so delicious, you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. Factor saves time by delivering chef-crafted meals to your doorstep, eliminating the hassle of grocery shopping and meal prep. And afterwards, clean up. Hey, there are no dishes to wash. Each Factor meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes, faster than ordering in. They take the hard part out of meal preparation. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work together to create delicious meals with nutritious ingredients. Offering more than 29 meal options each week, so selection can't be beat, and you'll never be bored. With Factor, you can also customize your diet. They offer vegetarian and vegan meals, keto meals, low-calorie options, cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein veggie sides, and more. All you need to keep your energy up through the day. It's healthy eating made easy. Factor is offering huge savings to Rantcast listeners who use the promo code LEWIS120 at checkout. Just visit go.factor75.com slash LEWIS120 and use the code LEWIS120 at checkout to receive $120 off your first five weeks of meal plans. Once again, go.factor75.com slash LEWIS120 and use the code LEWIS120 at checkout. We're coming to you from the Colonial Theater here in, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. It is one of my favorite cities, it's, uh, and um, it is where I think that uh, I became, uh, I, I spent a lot of time up here. I did a play at uh, the, uh, uh, the rep at, uh, at Harvard, and um, I, uh, at that time, and I worked a lot at uh, Catch a Rising Star, and I've worked a lot in places around Boston, and, um, and because of the, the, the comic community in Boston at, at that time and continues to be, it was one of the reasons I think I became a, a better comic. I certainly became a much more bitter comic than I had. <laughs> Imagine being so. It's it's always it's great to be back here. If you've never been to Boston, it's it's truly uh, it's it's well worth your time and and and, and go out there and see a, a Red Sox game. And, uh, they they this is really going to piss them off. Yeah, well it is. It's true. And I'm just going to chastise you a little. But you once you won, you started to become a little snotty. Okay, and and you and you started to get and, and the one thing I liked about you before because I'm my team is like uh, whew, is a horrifying. So I know you're all excited that baseball is back. I'm not. I'm I'm not because it was going to be a great season for the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, it was. It was. It was going to be one of our best because we wouldn't we wouldn't play. And that would be tremendous, but uh, but you guys just calm, tone it down a little, because leave leave that kind of nonsense to the Yankees, okay? Please, I'm serious. 
You, uh, you don't know. I'm sorry. You don't. You're not. Uh, look, I was I fucking rooted for you guys. All right. I can go through games that I fucking watched because my team was a piece of shit. And so my whole life is devoted to beating the Yankees. But what I don't need is for you to be arrogant about it. You won, so calm the fuck down. Just sit there. This, of course, will have no effect on, at all. Um, so we're going to get right to this. We've got some great ones. This is from D. McMahon. Uh, my rant is that your rant has inspired nothing but confusion in those sitting around me. Where's he going after the show? What do you mean, rant? How come we don't see it? It's the Twitter thing. God damn, how late will this go on? <laughs> I've been doing this for seven years and trying to get the word out to people, and it's still like I come in and do it, and it's like a shock. Uh, Jen Bond, so I'm sitting at your show right now, and the fucking couple next to me are practically conceiving a baby. <laughs> Can we get them a room, maybe a GoFundMe from the audience? It's, I'm known, that's one of the things I'm, a lot of people come to see me, I'm known as the erotic comic. <laughs> These are two that kind of go together because, uh, and I uh, always kind of give time for folks who need to vent, who, who've been through this shit in terms of their jobs. This is Randy Watson. Teachers are getting treated like shit. We work throughout the pandemic. And the kids and parents are worse than ever. We know things suck. Don't take it out on us. We showed up over and over again. And it, it really is. Yeah. And wait till they start talking critical race theory and all the other bullshit. Oh, you're, you're in for a treat. Yes, yeah, sir. When they start coming in to ban the books, oh yeah, you're gonna have fun. Fucking unbelievable. No, it's it's extraordinary. It's really, literally. You think that it would have created respect? It, 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 it. This is Rachel. I'm a doctor at a big hospital here in Boston, and I'm just exhausted with about half of our country. How can we teach people that getting COVID after not being vaccinated or wearing a mask is just Darwinism? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Dopey the Clown. If I was a doctor, um, I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you deal with people who, you, that you run into that, because they say, how do you, you know, because they do thousands of interviews for being done during that. Well, how would you explain, they'd say to a doctor, how would you explain it to someone who, you know, to try to convince him to take the shot. And I would take a, I wouldn't be able to, I would just take a hammer and hit their, <laughs> just hit their hand. You're gonna take it. What? You're gonna take it. What? You're gonna take it. And I'm just gonna keep doing this, fuck nut. I don't know how you could be civil with them. I'm serious. You're a doctor. Fucking A. Son of a bitch. And they come, no, I got something better I read on Facebook. <laughs> this one is good. I like this because this reminds me of why I, I don't work in an office. This is from Nicole, and I'm not going to say your last name in case there are other people here who might know you, Nicole. <laughs> Hi, Lewis. I'd like to tell you about the HR manager I had at my last job, <laughs> a residential eating disorder center. First off, she was a raging cunt. Yeah. <laughs> I love when women use the word. I, it's so spectacular. I'm still convinced she is a lizard person. Her facial expression never changed despite never having Botox. She sucked. She lost paperwork, wore dumb t-shirts. <laughs> I, I just don't know what a dumb t-shirt is, Nicole, and, and would blab about how much Ritalin she snorted the night before. 
She was the least comforting person, especially someone who was in human resources. <laughs> when a few of us went to her about a, our friend who, before she quit, the medical director had actually sent her a dick pic. Yeah, we knew it was him because he used a binder clip to keep his pants up. <laughs> I hate that bitch, and I hope she gets the clap. <laughs> wow. That's where I'm going to end that. That's too good. That's the great ending. You don't hear clap anymore. It's, that's really good. That's like World War II. This is Tim Hill. Has, has anyone noticed how fat Putin's face has gotten? <laughs> he looks like an insecure paper plate with erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Taking more than the recommended dosage of erectile dysfunction medication can result in erections lasting more than four hours and a big fat Putin face. <laughs> I don't think that making fun of someone's obvious physical side effects from erectile dysfunction medicine, medicine abuse should ever be the punchline of a joke, but in the current situation, I believe low blows are justified. <laughs> Fuck Putin, long live the Ukraine. <laughs> this is from Carolyn. Carolyn, never mind. <laughs> this is really special, Carolyn. <laughs> How do we get our 24-year-old daughter to move out of the house? <laughs> she does nothing but walk around naked. <laughs> she needs to go. I don't know if there's a way that you could monetize it. <laughs> I know that's wrong to say that, but uh, if you want to, I mean, if you can't get her to move out, at least make some cash. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just can't imagine. This is from Oliver Peliquin. I'll be going to your show in Boston tonight, and I'm currently a senior in high school. On top of going to classes and having a job, my year has been consumed by filling out college applications. I've come to realize that this is one of life's necessary evils, like taxes, death, and waiting at the DMV. <laughs> After filling out my eighth application, I've got to say they're really starting to piss me off. <laughs> The sheer amount of questions that you need to answer is fucking crazy. Are your grades weighted? Where did your parents go to school? When did they graduate? What's your social security month number? I don't fucking know! <laughs> Not to mention, it was so long ago, they can't remember their social security number. Listen, I'm just trying to apply to your school, not have you write my biography. <laughs> the questions don't end there, though. No, sir. Colleges seem to ask some of philosophy's great questions. <laughs> really, Luke, questions like, what makes you, you? <laughs> why are you the right fit for our community? Or why did you pick your major? None of these compare to my all-time favorite, though. Why do you want to come to our college? Why? Why? What, is your ego not big enough? You need me to write a 500-word essay on how great you are? What do you care anyways? I pay you and you give me knowledge. That's how this transaction works. <laughs> and in 10 years, you'll send me a letter in the mail saying, hey, remember us? We want some more money. <laughs> That's what I want out of the college experience. We now live in a country where people are expected to go to college, which begs the question, why do we make it so hard for them? I must have written over 20 essays at this point, essays that don't really show colleges anything about me. On top of that, 
There's also the student loan problem. College prices are increasing faster than wages, year by year making it harder for graduates to pay off their debts. At what point will we hit the tipping point? Eventually, we won't be able to pay for college. Even after a lifetime of working hard, politicians need to get up off their fucking asses and help the new generation fix this fucked up education system. Thank you for reading this and throwing some more fucks if you think it's necessary. <laughs> I hated those. I fucking hated those fucking forms. I, I did, and I, and I was, uh, I never, I never filled them out well, which would explain why a, a lot of the places just said, "Fuck you." <laughs> it is. It's really. I'm amazed. It was great to see that. I mean, what's truly amazing is they haven't changed at all. It's like it fucking, I'm, I did this, it's what, 60 some, whatever it is, 50, whatever the fuck years ago, <laughs> 55, and, 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 and not, not even one person comes in and goes, you know, maybe another question. <laughs> like, you know, how to make a pie. <laughs> this is from Paul Provost. You're gonna be performing at my alma mater, Emerson College this Friday. I'm not able to be there. There's a stupid fucking trend that's emerged in just about all forms of media that I consume and I'm sick of it. Alliteration. You know, that incredibly clever, deep and thought provoking little trick we all learned well about in the goddamn fourth grade. <laughs> String two words together that start with the same letter and look out. Huh? We've got the next Pulitzer Prize winner on our hands. At first, I thought it was just the lazy writing of local television stations in Boston. Nope. It's everywhere. Every fucking where. Car commercials, weather reports, everywhere. The national news sounds like Sesame Street. <laughs> I take that back. That's an insult to Sesame Street. <laughs> what drives me nuts is they wouldn't do it if the stupid fucking audience didn't love it. Love, love, love it. I'll pause to point out, yes, I know, I'm a member of that stupid fucking audience. It's not all my fault. My wife likes to watch that fucking hairdo, David Muir. <laughs> Spit out a couple of sound bites in between drug commercials every night. I feel like I should clap and drool every time he does it. Did you hear that, honey? There's a crippling crisis in Ukraine. <laughs> they got tornado trouble in Iowa. Biden says no gas gouging. It's our collective attention span, Lewis. It's two words long. And apparently, if they don't start with the same letter, fuck it. <laughs> We're out. We're coming to you from Providence, Rhode Island at the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. And uh, for those of you who are watching on the stream, I'm sorry we're a little late, but we were having a lot of fun. When I first started coming here uh, uh, quite a while ago, it was, uh, it was a shithole. And, um, <laughs> and you know that, and you know that. It's not like, I'm, no, you know that. When I moved to New York, it was a shithole. But it has really uh, be, become something else again, and it's uh, uh, well worth a visit, I'll tell you that. And, um, and they're kind of nestled here. It's their own little secret world. So I'm just going to get to it because we got a lot of stuff here. Uh, the the uh, you'll see the theme at the beginning. This is Tim Timothy Bada. Uh, our roads are so bad here. I lost my dog in one of the potholes. <laughs> Suzanne Boudreau. The Rhode Island potholes are sponsored by the local dentist because they will rattle your fillings loose. <laughs> Tiffany Ryan. Friggin' potholes. Could they be any bigger? And then Mike uh, Ba, why the fuck are we waiting until the infrastructure falls apart until we decide to say, hey, before this bridge fucking falls, we better do something. <laughs> so apparently, 
uh, things are going really well here except for the roads. <laughs> I mean, it was, there were a lot of them. There was a lot of the fucking potholes, 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 potholes. But the money's coming. They have that infrastructure bill, and I'm sure you buy, boy, at least by 2074. <laughs> I, what? Nobody's coming back until then. Nobody's coming back? Until then. Until they fix the potholes? <laughs> and, and, well, you're just going to sit here? <laughs> They're an interesting crowd. No, that's enough. They, they can't. Here's a little tip. This is a live stream and they can't hear you fuck all. Okay? So, um, let these, you, you had plenty of opportunity to write something in. You could have said, we're not coming back. Okay. And then it goes, you'll see this too. Um, this is Nat Coakley. This is, it, this is about the theater. It's fucking cold. Brent Desrosier, tell them to turn the fucking heat on here, the cheap bricks. I'm fucking freezing in here. <laughs> Ashley DeBarros, why is it so cold in here? <laughs> it's uh, St. Michelle, it's so cold inside at your Providence gig, I'm wondering if this was your idea. <laughs> it's your next venue, a fucking igloo? <laughs> Yeah, if the price were right. <laughs> yeah, this was my idea. I like to keep the audience at like four degrees. Uh, 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 David Letterman used to keep the uh, audience cold. I mean, like this kind of cold. And I, and, and, and I hated it. I mean, it's just even performing. It was like, this is fucking. Because he felt, because it's good for, it's good for comedy. I, 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 fuck you. It's not. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, Rob Carafa, Carafa says, well, I'm very excited to see your show again. I may be more excited about my sippy cup of wine. <laughs> and I, I agree with you on that. <laughs> I, I, I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you. You, you. No, 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 no. Got it? You could have written in. Got it, asshole? No. Ball game's over. This is going throughout the world. And allow the people who wrote stuff to let it get out. I don't know what you're yelling. What I just heard you yell was bandy, bandy. What is the fuck does that mean? Adult, Adult sippy cup. Great. That really opened up a whole door. Those of you throughout the world, uh, someone from Providence has contributed tonight by saying, adult sippy cup. <laughs> this is not, not a child's, I, thought, I think you got it out there, but here, I'm not sure they got it. <laughs> this is uh, from <laughs> Joe Spr Spramuli. It's suddenly become popular to openly shit on teachers. We're used to abuse, it comes with the job. It certainly does. Lately though, every Q, Dick, and Harry is lining up at school board meetings on the national news to scream about how we want to keep their kids alive <laughs> and help them empathize with others. Now they're also passing laws in Florida saying you can't ever say anything that might make a person uncomfortable in school. How the hell does anyone learn if they're never uncomfortable? It's not just Florida. There are a number of states that are doing it. There's a number of states where all of a sudden parents are showing up. And God damn it. Like they just had a thought yesterday. <laughs> People are going to be uncomfortable. I fucking, you know, when I learned history and learned what had happened, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, they, they don't want to discuss it's slavery some states. It's like, I didn't like go home at night and weep. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, look at what I did. I was fucking, fuck you, I was 14, you fucking idiots. 
Like, it's no trust in children whatsoever. It's no trust whatsoever. It's fucking unbelievable. It's, it's taking everything, it's taking, it's taking that whole lack of sex education that, that goes on in this country. You don't really have a penis or a vagina, forget it. No. And then applying it to everything. It's madness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is also from Ted, St. Michelle. Other than the price of gas forcing me to seriously think about buying a donkey, <laughs> why should I give two shits about Putin? Here's, here's why. It's really simple, Ted. Really fucking simple. Here's who's supporting Putin, okay? Apparently you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because by not giving two shits, and then the North Koreans, the Chinese, um, Syria, and there's a couple of other countries. The rest of the world, Ted, the whole rest of the world thinks he's out of his fucking mind. Okay? Ted? Ted, he's an autocrat who is fucking beating the shit. He has beat the shit out of a group of people in Syria and bombed the fuck out of them. He has done things that are heinous and beyond anything that is imaginable in our lifetime, okay? Certainly in mine. And so that's why you might want to think <laughs> outside of the pothole problem. <laughs> you might want to give two shits. This is uh, <laughs> Susan Peruccello, teaching in a mobile classroom with no running water or bathrooms. Oh boy, how the fuck am I supposed to keep from killing the children? <laughs> this is uh, Corey Jacobson. I'm here at the vet watching the show, and two people have already tripped walking up the stairs in the right center balcony, roll four. Fall down. Yeah, could they please fucking fix it so I can stop laughing at the fuckers falling? <laughs> please, please be careful walking out. I, I just don't need that. You know, you show up in the news tomorrow. And then it, also that there, it, up there, in Kelly Sullivan, the back row here in Rhode Island, boyfriend, fiance, just got a new job making 200K and still making me split the rent 50-50. <laughs> Help. She writes at the end, help. <laughs> wow, I mean, that's not good, Kelly. But you're way up there, so please be sure to be careful when you're walking. <laughs> he may not pay for that hospital bill either. <laughs> wow, that is rugged. <laughs> wow, boy. Whew, I don't, wow, okay. And we'll end with, um, well, this one is, this is one, this one, no, I'm not going to end with this one. I'm, Marie Fryer says, not much to rant about since no one is bombing my city. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. <laughs> it's true, you know, but, it, but I think we, you know, the one thing we have to do is we, we you know, it's, you've got to, we, we got to step back from it because it's all we're getting now is, is that on TV, it's oh, that kind of, you know, it's in our face, and none of us know what to do, including our friend, it, was it Eddie, I guess, or somebody, whoever it was, or Ted. None of us know what to do. You sit there and watch, and you go, what the fuck? You just feel totally ineffectual all day. We just come through this shit, all of this shit. That's the other reason, Ted. We just come through with shit. And now we got to deal with dickhead fucknut. <laughs> and you don't know why. God damn it.
Wake the fuck up, Ted. <laughs> somebody last night, when, when, uh, when Jeff came on stage, he mentioned Putin, and somebody applauded. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've got no time. I really don't have time anymore. And, and we really do have to start, maybe instead of running the news, we maybe start, want to show, start teaching history again. <laughs> Because people don't seem to get it. And this finally comes from Eddie Pannone, who's uh, here tonight. I think I, I recently heard someone say that this country has never been so divided. I guess they've never heard of the Civil War, which began in 1861 and ended in 1865. Or was it 1965? Wait a minute, I'm not sure it's really over, but, but I digress. Let's jump to the 1980s and Ronald Reagan. Half the country loved Ronald Reagan and the other half were like me. Decent Americans who weren't stupid enough to believe in trickle-down economics. For those of you who don't know what trickle-down economics is, it's when Reagan drastically reduced the taxes that rich people paid, claiming that the extra money in their pockets would somehow trickle down to the poor and middle class. This was the joke I used at the time, Eddie, if I may add to what you've said. I used to say trickle-down theory is based on the fact that somebody would drinking beers, a lot of beers, and then they'd have a cup down there at the end, and then they'd piss their pants. <laughs> and then the, it would trickle down, and, and whatever beer was in the glass down there, that would be what the poor people would get. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Did it work? Hmm? Did trickle-down theory work? Of course it didn't work. The rich got richer and the rest of the country got fucked. Reaganomics resulted in a government that had no money, so the programs that aided the poor were cut. It's also today why public schools are using the same books they purchased in 1981, and why there's no money in the budget to fill in the fucking potholes that we have everywhere. In the 80s, some people hated Reagan and some loved him, but you know what? We didn't hate each other for it. I don't know who the next president is going to be, but I can guarantee you this, half the country is going to fucking hate him or her. And that's fine, and nothing new. But for fuck's sake, can we please stop hating each other? <laughs> Eddie Pannone Jr. from Rhode Island. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you, everyone who wrote in. Next Saturday night, we'll be coming to you from Jamestown, from the National Comedy Center. Send your rants in. We'll be doing a, a special rant is due to raise money for them. And once again, really a joy to be in Providence. You guys were just terrific. Take care of each other. Good night. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Ha <laughs> ha, Lewis Black. It is produced by James Salkind. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast. And most of all, thank you, all of you who ranted so well on this show. <laughs>